Like, I think because I have no concept about how I think about maths, I always have this perception that everyone else thinks about it in a very logical, ordered manner. And I must be really dumb because I don't do anything like that. Yeah. It's hard to, like, look down and see, like, what's going on. Like, is there, like, a reliable process happening here? Like, I yeah, don't think so. Yeah. Who's to say it's not just going to stop being able to be done? Yeah, and... <laughs> oh, Terrifying. <laughs> And I found it really weird that something like maths, which to me seemed quite dry and quite abstract, Yay. would be experienced in like quite a personal way. I think in a sense it's the most personal because there aren't words to guide you. It's in coming to understand very abstract concepts, it's about the sort of connotations they have for maths as something that might not meet people's expectations of it. Something in which there's a wide variety of different people and personalities, people approaching the subject very, very differently. Well, it depends what you mean by see stuff. I would say there are visual images that come to my mind when I'm solving a problem. Um, they're often quite hazy and ill-defined. No! Of course not. It's not synesthesia at all. It's just visualising an abstract concept or an analogy for an abstract concept. An analogy that might not be perfect but is quite good. So, I don't know, to take a silly example, if you want to visualise four dimensions, then you could start by visualising three. <laughs> but is there sort of feeling associated to those algebraic constructions? Are they are they just symbols on a page which you have the ability to manipulate, or they're, they're sort of is there something like a flavour that they have, or a feeling that they have that isn't yeah isn't quite an image, but it's also not just like yeah. A, a, a chain of sequences, a, a chain of, uh, of um, symbols. There is a feeling, but I think that's only because something that you're seeing in your mind's eye is somehow always stronger and more present than something you're seeing on a, on a page. I don't... For me, there's no kind of, sort of special significance or, or glow around the more kind of deeper structure that I'm seeing. I mean, when you've got a vector pun on your you got this thing and then some stuff sticking out and I don't know how to really describe it. But sometimes when you've got quite a complicated diagram with you know different different uh, sections of, of sheaves or vector bundles or whatever, and you know, there's lots of them living in the same space. It's good to sort of give them different colours and when you think well I don't know if they're really colours but separate them out somehow. When you think about one of them, so the others, this one sort of like flashes out and bulges and sort of vibrates a little bit. When I think of an open affine set, subset of some scheme which one thinks about quite a lot, I just think of like a little disc, even though that's not, not at all what they are. So this is the scheme and then it's like that. So tell us what you visualise when you think of a group. What is what is a group? Um, Not what is a group. What do you see? A group is a sort of um, bluish green colour with uh, some brackets around it. So it, it's it's not a crisp image in my mind. Um, I I just realised that there is this strange thing that I associate with groups. I don't know if that has any bearing on the way I do maths. I don't know. I, I suspect for some things it would be lost. If you try to be prescriptive on a hazy thing, that might be bad. So saying thing was a blob, I think wouldn't be good. Whereas for say inches mod n, saying thing was a circle would be very, very good. So I think, I think actually, I think, I'm kind of thinking, I think nearly always it's good to say how to think about it. But if it's a vague, vague way of thinking about it, like, you know, how do you think of a vector space? You need to have some picture, like, space. So I said, well, many of my colleagues think of vector space as being a place with sort of wind blowing through it, or howling empty space, and you wouldn't want to say to a student, think of it as wind blowing through it, <laughs> but the idea that it's a, it's a space, it's, it's living somewhere, is an important point of view. So the same way that I have a kind of feeling about the number 21, and I know that it's 3 times 7, and that it's 10 past 11, and I know all of these other things about 21, but that doesn't mean that I have a particular picture. So is, is there anything that you can say about what the groupness is? It's like a difficult question. I don't think I have anything helpful to say about that at all, and I wish I did because it might help my students if because
they they arrive in October and they've got two months to kind of learn what a group is and that's not a very long time to develop a sense of it. It's always I hear someone else talking about how they think about something and I think, oh, I wish I thought about it that way, yes. It's never the other way around. I never feel that my ways are, are better than other people's ways. I don't know why. I don't feel that. As in, like, if, if, I, if I really understand something, I'm always like, I always think, oh, everyone should think about it this way. I, I mean, obviously that's really self-centered, but I think that's, that would be my default position. The Hebrew translation for group is the Hebrew word for set. And it's been so hard for me every time here hearing a group and I'm thinking about set. And I'm talking, sometimes I'm talking about set and saying groups and then everyone like... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things which maybe you can't, you don't visualise in a, what's the word, a sort of pictorial sense. You just, they make sense in your brain, which is probably hard to explain to people who don't do maths. But... I, some things make so some bits of maths make a lot more sense to me than other bits of maths, and it's not because I can visualise them better. It's just because they sort of click. I think. In my experience, not a lot because they're quite hard to describe to other people, particularly kind of quickly over over lunch or something, because they're very personal. They're something in your head on your journey to solving the problem, and although well, indeed, it's a very important skill to be able to write your solution and explain it coherently to someone else. I think, in some respect, the journey that you take to getting to that solution is something that you, you take alone. Not that I find it difficult or artificial, but it feels like it's part of what I'm doing when I'm thinking about trying to explain something to other people. In the same way that I'm thinking about how can I describe what this is as clearly as possible, what is the question we're trying to answer, what is the kind of core of the idea that we're going to be using here, all of those kinds of things. Part of that is kind of thinking about, well, is there a picture that somehow describes this? But does it feel part of your like personal experience of maths and the way that you do maths? If I were never talking to anybody else about it, I might not produce some of those pictures. So... But then I'd be a very sad person as well, because I wouldn't be talking to anybody else about it, and I like talking to people about maths. I think it's hard because I, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not like a huge visualiser of things, like, of the co I, I don't think I'm a huge visualiser of the concepts themselves, but rather I do think I visualise the actual whole process of attacking a problem. I think I can see my, I, can th I think I can see the problem and its constituent parts as something that I need to untangle or like a piece of string. Just sort of think about things, have a rough, Maybe even quite a good idea about going on, but it's not the most uh, sort of conscious. Well, I, I don't. I don't mean conscious, but uh, I don't know. One can communicate a lot of visual images that one cannot um, draw, but I also think that each person thinks about um, a lot of these constructions in their own way, uh, and and this personal vision cannot. Be communicated. I always find it funny when um, the person goes up to the lecturer at the end and then it looks like they're both kind of playing with things in the air. <laughs> Do you see, like, whenever they go up, it's like one of them will say, and then the lecturer will say, <laughs> and it's like <laughs> they've, got, they've got their way of doing things, and I think that kind of makes some sense. Like, as in, it do obviously depends, like how much of a similar understanding you're on. I mean, whether you're actually like teaching the other person the course or whether you're like basically both there. And if you're basically both there, I always find that you end up drawing a couple of circles on a page and maybe a line through them. Um, and that solves most problems. And when I'm sort of moving my hands around, I'm sort of grasping for what is the essence of what connects them. So I'm not picturing anything specifically, but I'm just having a vague sense that there are four or five different blobs that kind of related and that's what I'm striving to and I use my hands. I find it like really hard to understand how my brain thinks about maths when I'm doing maths. Um, certainly sometimes I do get like a, an image of what's happening but I mean that's probably more geometrical and that's why I like geometry is because I can actually visualise it or I can kind of intuitively understand what's going on. Um, yeah, that will probably be the only other time. I think the rest of the time I do maths, it just sort of happens, or I just sort of do it. Many times I realise that, like, going to the toilets 
every time I go into the toilet, I solve a problem. One time I told it to my commander and she was like, okay, just go to the toilet every five minutes. And perhaps, you know, when you're washing your hair or when you're or, or sleeping, there's nothing, we're sort of quite uncluttered, there's nothing else. And there's no pressure to have an idea. I mean, the feeling of, you know, I've been sitting at my desk for the last hour trying to do this thing and I haven't got any ideas is sort of almost counterproductive, whereas if I'm washing my hair, I know that I don't have to try to solve this math problem. I, could, I, I probably will have succeeded if in five minutes' time my hair is clean. Passive enlightenment occurs very rarely. I don't really believe that it's something you can rely on. It really does happen that you'll be stuck on something for ages and then it will suddenly become clear. But it's rarely without effort, it's rarely just one sunny day. I have a phrase for myself, I call this eyes open and eyes closed maths. So eyes closed maths is when you're in your armchair and you're thinking of these pictures and they're flowing and it's very nice and indeed you can think of things that you could never think of if you were scribbling on a piece of paper. But then it's all eyes open maths when you're sort of there, you're working, you're, you're writing and writing and seeing if something works, actually testing it. Um, and I find this kind of writing lots of stuff and seeing if something um, holds water, I can't really do with my eyes closed. I don't have the mental capacity to hold all, all that in, in my head at once. Is there kind of images that are coming to head when I'm solving like a more abstract problem where like the actual objects themselves aren't like readily available as like a, a like shape or a like distance apart? And um, that's where like using the word hazy did ring true for me because like the fact is that I think there is like something there is like some sort of image or something in my head that is like of things trying to of things trying to like come together and like things kind of moving around in different ways like not entirely non-distinctly but like and I think that that once I've like kind of got a grasp on actually kind of it's getting a slightly better grasp on those objects very slowly um, that like then eventually enables them to like come together in some way and like solve solve the, what's trying to happen. Um, so that's I've concluded I do maths. <laughs>